Welcome back, monsters. Tonight I have some true sightings and reports of the infamous Bigfoot, aka Sasquatch. Please enjoy. The location of this sighting was at Monkey Mountain along Missouri River Bluffs, east of the Missouri River. The nearest town was Amazonia. The nearest road was Dark Road near Missouri 59. While traveling along dark roads skirting Monkey Mountain in northwest Missouri, a tall thin creature of possibly seven foot in height crossed the road in front of my vehicle. The creature was coming off the steep side of the hill heading towards the river areas. This animal was quite thin with sparse hair that was long and flowing. I got the impression it was quite old. It did not seem to notice I was there. It crossed the 10 to 12 wide roadway in approximately three strides. It was unhurried. I was not able to return to look for tracks. However, I am planning on returning to the general area to investigate further. There have been reports following the Missouri River to north of Kansas City for years, including a possible encounter at a military base on the Kansas side in Levensworth County, Kansas. There were no other witnesses, but longtime residents claimed to outsiders that Monkey Mountain got its name from a circus train crash to keep strangers out. If the truth be known, there has been encounters there since the area was first settled, all the way south to just north of Kansas City, Missouri. This happened approximately between 12.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. Monkey Mountain is a densely timber rocky bluff area, very close to several river inlets feeding into the Missouri River. On November 18, 2004, at approximately 6.45 p.m., I was traveling south on a winding dirt road less than five miles from my home on Sea Highway between McDowell and East Purdy, Missouri. As I drove along, I noticed a head in the ditch line an animal. I know that there is a mule that often gets out and roams the area, so I slowed down considerably so as not to hit her. As I got closer, it stood up facing my explorer. Instead of moving into the headlight beam as a deer or something would do, it came at an angle from the ditch towards the passenger side of my truck. It was in my estimate at least as tall as I am, 5'8", covered with hair. The hair was a buff or light color. All I really remember at that point is hitting the lock button on my doors and screaming. It came up to the passenger side window and I could see its chest. If I saw the face, I do not recall it. Just the chest in the window. I was screaming and hit the accelerator and sped away as fast as I could. I don't know what it was, only that i never seen anything like that before in my life. But it does make me wonder about events that happened around our house in the past. In the spring of this year, my dog started going crazy barking and I stepped out onto the porch to see what was wrong. I hear a scream that I took to be a mountain lion. Knowing that I had a dog in the back pasture, I went to my truck and went to the back to let her into the main pasture with the other dogs. I noticed on my way down to the back pasture that my very large dogs had all of my goats in a tight knot by the small barn, and the dogs were in a semicircle around the goats. When I got to the back to let the other dog in, I noticed that there was no sound at all in the woods nearby. My dogs were silent. The dog that I went down to get was terrified and rushed through the open gate as soon as I opened it. I went back to the house and went to bed. The next day, the neighbor told me that my dogs had fought something behind his house at about 3 a.m. He didn't know what it was, only that it was large. When I checked my dogs out, they did not have the slash cuts they would have had if they had tangled with a mountain lion. There were scrapes, but that was about it. Our fence at the back of the place was also pushed down. Our fence consists of cattle panels that are 52 inches tall. They are hooked to the post with heavy wire ties. I cannot bend the ties with my bare hands. At the place where the fence was pushed down, the panel was loose from the post and the clips were in the brush. At the time I thought it odd, as a mountain lion would not have been capable of doing this. A bear could, but not a cougar. There were no other witnesses, and unfortunately I was alone. I got the nerve up to tell the mother of my son's friend about what I had seen. 
She then related that her husband had seen almost the same creature, only taller and bigger, not a mile from my home on Sea Highway. He was traveling the road on a motorcycle and noticed an awful odor. He then saw it and said that it stepped over the fence with no effort and crossed the road in two strides. He can better describe the face and eyes. This happened at approximately 6.45 p.m. It was dark and the road was isolated and dark. There is a creek on the west side of the road. Rough wooded terrain past the creek and rough wooded terrain on the east side of the road. At the point where I saw it, there is a hay field between the creek and the road. I'm always doing outdoor activities, floating, camping, hiking, and recently I've had some strange encounters. Firstly, I like to go to conservation areas frequently, and at Wire Road Conservation Area off of Grisham Ford Road. In Crane, I was there with a friend. It was just after sunset when something would throw very large rocks into the Crane Creek. That's all it consisted of is splashing into the creek. It sounds like bowling ball sized rocks being thrown into the water are making not only a splash, but a kerplunk noise. This really made me and my friend wonder what was making this noise. We were very open minded about what could cause this noise and it happened on multiple occasions. All shortly after sunset, when no one else was at the conservation area. We told several people about this and of course everyone would say it's probably just ducks. But like I said, the objects in the water were very large, making a kerplunk noise, like a cannonball. Just as we finally had given up on the search for the cause of the splashing, months had gone by and me and the same friend went on a float trip. It happened to be the 4th of July in 2008. We planned to float in my canoe on Flat Creek, from Jenkins Bridge all the way to a low water bridge on Flat Creek Road. It was a very long float. The float started about midday and about halfway through the float is when it became very dark and cloudy, so no moonlight. It was just pitch dark on the creek, and at a slow deep section of the creek we were just quietly floating along, not talking when it seemed like we startled something very large about 20 feet away. It was just standing on the edge of the creek when we startled it, so it stepped out of the creek. You could hear one leg pull out the water followed by one more, and it displaced a lot of water making waves. It made a couple more steps up on land into a very forested area. Me and my friend were stunned, just remaining dead silent and staring at the area where the noise originated. Then a very large rock was thrown within five feet of the boat, exactly like the occurrences in Crane. Even though we never saw the creature, it was very clear that it was a large bipedal creature because of the very long strides out of the deep water. It seems that we startled it, so it walked just out of sight, not really frightened though. Then it threw a rock to warn us to get away. There was one witness, which was my friend and I. It happened around 10 p.m., very cloudy, very dark. The river was surrounded by dense forested area, slow deep area of the river. A camp, now called Camp Arnold at Timberlake, belonging to the Salvation Army about five miles west-northwest of Ettonville. The nearest town was Ettonville. The nearest road was Webster Road East. My name is J.G. and I am 48 years old. When I was a child, I used to go to church camp at different camps through public welfare assistance. We didn't have much money and my mother would send me to camp every summer. This summer was different for me, for it was the first summer I was going to camp by myself. My sister would go with me in previous years. I'm not sure where the camp is located other than it was near Mount Rainier, Washington. The camp was named Camp Timberlake, now Camp Arnold. This was a brand new camp, and it was the opening summer for the camp. The camp had boys town and girls town. There was a lake that had a dock with a slide that spiraled. The dock floated out a few yards from the shore. All the cabins were A-frames with a loft for the counselors. Between the boys' cabins and the girls' cabins was the dining hall. I had a lot of fun that summer swimming, shooting guns and bows and arrows. The cabins were set within the fir trees and we had about eight boys per cabin. I think there were about 50 to 70 kids in the camp. I was only about 10 to 12 years old, from 1965 to 1970. 
It was about the third day of camp when everything changed. We had retired for the night and everyone was in bed. I was awoken by loud noises. The counselor told us all to stay in our beds. I remember the boy who slept in the top bunk above me. I called him Silvertooth for his front tooth was silver. Looked out the window and said he saw several large hairy men around the water tower and the cabins and they were ten feet tall. I was scared so I hid under my covers and wished it would stop. The counselor was upset and said for us all to stay in our bed and to stay away from the door and the windows. After what seemed to be hours, the ruckus stopped and we went to sleep. The next morning when we went outside, just in front of our cabin was a 30 to 40 foot fir tree tipped over and the root ball was up in the air with a hole in the ground about 8 feet. There were human like footprints everywhere. They were from 8 inches to maybe 14 inches in length and depressed into the ground about a quarter of an inch. You could see the toes, think four or five. I was pretty young and don't really remember. They took us for a walk that day around the perimeter of the camp. I remember them telling us that the girls played a joke on us and that we were going to play a joke on them tonight. One counselor said you should see the dogs here. They are five feet tall. As we walked we came to the water tower where Silvertooth saw the ten foot men and there were large footprints all around the water tower. When we got to the lake something had pulled a bunch of algae or seaweed out and it was everywhere. That night we played a scary record. Didn't sound anything like the night before and the counselor said we really got back at those girls. When we woke up the next morning, they told us we were going home early, and we loaded the bus to come home two or three days early. Back in those days, I never heard of Bigfoot. Later in my life, the movie Bigfoot came out, and I went to see the movie. When the Bigfoot came into the camp, it brought me back to the night in camp, and the noises I heard that night. As an adult... I often think about that night and wonder how I could get a hold of someone else who was at Camp Timberlake that summer night. I know that all the adults must have seen them and even got some photos. My older sister said that she went to that camp on Mount Rainier, and at the gate it has a sign that says, The Only Known Sighting of Bigfoot. If you know of this sighting, please tell me how I can find out more about it, and maybe even visit the camp or get in touch with others that were there that night. All camp leaders and campers were the witnesses, not sure how many there were. It happened between 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. The environment was Camp Timber Lake. There was a water tower, a lake right near it, Boys Town A-frame, cabins, and surrounding forests. This sighting happened in Calhoun County, Michigan. It was right near Albion, north of I-94, 29-mile road, just north of H Drive, behind Schoolhouse on the right, behind the swamp and the apple orchard. This was October, just after my birthday. It was getting chilly in the late afternoon. My friend and I were bored, so we decided to go walking around in the woods. Adjacent to my home, which was a one-room schoolhouse, my stepdad was remodeling. We did these walks often looking for cool places to build forts or just exploring. This time we went further back through an old apple orchard, and that's when it happened. As we were walking, we both noticed it was really quiet. No sounds of birds or animals. Nothing at all. We were a little amazed at the silence. Then the wind picked up a little, which blew the leaves around. There was still a lot on the trees, though. The leaves blowing broke the silence, so we started to move on. I had this weird feeling of being watched. I told my friend. He said he had it too. At that moment, we both heard this loud thumping crunch. I said, Did you hear that? He nodded yes, afraid to talk because it was loud and close. Probably around 50 feet away. It was like something had stomped the ground. I said it sounded like it came from over there. Turning to the direction of the noise, we both saw this big, upright animal covered in hair. It immediately moved into the deep brush and the trees while making this deep kind of throated noise like, Ugh. All we could see was the back three quarters the way up the stomach, the butt and the left leg going into the brush. It wasn't crouching. It was upright, like it was just walking by. I started running, not thinking of my friend. I ran as fast as I could to my house, which was about 350 feet away, 
through the dense brush, partial swamp, and the trail. When I stopped, my friend was right there, which surprised me because I thought I could run faster than him. This thing's leg was at least as tall as me. I was about 5'4", at 14 years old. It was dark reddish with some gray in it, about three quarter of an inches long. The fur was super thick. Its leg was thicker than my body. Out of the blue, my friend recently visited me. We haven't seen each other since high school and we're both in our forties now. The second thing he asked was, do you remember what we saw behind your house? I told him, yeah, we saw a damn Bigfoot. And I don't think I have ever run so fast or strong since. Not even when I was in the Marines. Since then, I have been always watchful for these critters. There were deep impressions in the ground. There were trees broken, loud screams before and after. At the time, I thought the screams were owls. Now, I know better. There was one other witness besides myself, which was my friend. We haven't heard of anyone else reporting anything in this immediate area. It happened around 4 to 5 p.m., it was getting dark and the weather was fair or overcast. It had rained for a couple days prior. It was at the apple orchard that was abandoned and overgrown a lot of schmuck trees, choke cherry and thick brush bordering swamp, an old room schoolhouse. 